In this video, we're going to look at solving the equation 2 sine of 2x equals 1 for x, where x is going to go between 0 and 360 degrees. And we might call that the domain or the restriction where we're looking for solutions to this problem. So in this video, the first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to look at how to do it with the calculator. Then the second thing we'll do is looking still at the calculator, how we can do a graphical solution. And then the third thing we'll do in the video at the end is we'll come back and use the unit circle over here to solve it by hand as well. So starting off with our CAS calculator, what we're going to want to do is go into the main menu. Next, we want to bring up the keyboard so that we can type in our equation, which is 2 times sine of 2x. And then we need to close off that bracket. And that's going to equal 1. And then we need to deal with this thing that I'm calling the domain or the restriction over where we're trying to find solutions. So we're going to go into math three and we're going to find the straight up and down line that's a given that line. So it's going to be given that we have x is between zero and 360. So still in math three, we're going to type in zero is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 360. And it's worth now just double checking that your calculator is in. For this question, we want degrees. So down the bottom, we can see that degrees is there. So we're all okay. Then we're just going to highlight the equation and go interactive equation inequality solve for X. So we can just press okay. And it will give us four solutions. X is 15, X is 75, X is 195 and X is 255. So they are the solutions to this problem. So what I'll do now is I'll just write those down so we can refer to them later. So we had x is equal to... So they are the four solutions to this particular equation. So next up what we're going to do is we're going to have a go at understanding or demonstrating what the solution to the equation 2 sine of 2x equals 1 means on a graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag down either side of this equation into the graph screen. So we're going to drag down 2 sine of 2x and then separately we're going to just drag down the 1 to see what happens. So on the calculator I'm going to hit the graph icon to bring up the graph and we're going to drag down first of all and you can see this in blue highlighting on the CAS screen the 2 sine of 2x and dragging that down will give what looks like a straight line at this point in time. But we'll be able to change that in a moment. And then I'm just going to drag down, and again you can see what I've highlighted, the 1. And that'll drag down and graph a separate red line. So now what I need to do is change the view screen so I get a better look at what's going on. So using the four arrows at the top, we're going to change it so our x minimum is 0, because that's the lowest x value we want. And the maximum x value that we want to see is 360. Then for the y min and y max, I'm just going to change these from negative, and if we have a look at the amplitude, this is 2, so I'm going to go from negative 3 to 3. And hitting OK should give us a fairly good view of this graph. Now if I go analysis G solve and look for the intersection points of those two lines, I can hit intersection there. And it brings up the first one with coordinate 15 comma 1. So that's when x is 15, this will equal 1. So that's handy. I can lock that on by hitting execute. And then I can move across to the next point by hitting the right arrow on the hard keypad. It comes up as 75 comma 1 as a coordinate, which is the next value of x we found that was a solution. So I'm going to lock that on by hitting execute. And going across using the right arrow, I get 195 comma 1 which is our third solution. And these solutions are all the points of intersection between the graph of 2 sine of 2x and the straight line represented by y equals 1. Tabbing across once more, we find the final solution is 255, 1. So that 255 is the fourth solution we found in the main screen above all of this. So you can still see those four solutions up in the main screen and the four points of intersection down in the graph screen. So now the final part of this video is going to be looking at the unit circle and seeing how we could get these four solutions using the unit circle. So what we need to do is we actually need to start by rewriting this equation slightly. And the first thing we need to do is get sine by itself. So we can see that we have 2 sine of 2x equals 1, 
which is actually just the same as sine of 2x. And when we divide by that 2, we get sine of 2x equals 1 half. And that 1 half here should be an exact value that's bringing back memories for you. So sine's represented on the y-axis on a unit circle. And we have a pattern that goes root 1 on 2, root 2 on 2, root 3 on 2. So it's this root 1 on 2, which is the half, that we're particularly interested in here. And to get a half, we could be in this position on the unit circle, or we could be over here at this position on the unit circle. And now to get to those spots, we need to use the smallest angle that has an exact value associated with it. And that small angle is 30 degrees. So from here to here, that angle there is 30 degrees. Now we can also see that we could be in this spot, and we talked about that, which is 30 degrees backwards from 180. So we're 30 degrees backwards there from the straight horizontal line, or the x-axis, which is represented by 180 degrees at this point. So that would be 180, and then we subtract 30 to get to 150 as our second possible solution at this point in time. However, neither 30 nor 150 actually appeared in our answer. And that's because we have a 2x here that we'll have to deal with. So keeping track of what we know so far, we know that the value of 2x could equal either 30 degrees, which was our first angle that gave sine equaling that's a half. And then we also talked about being 180 degrees subtract 30, which would be 150. And then we actually get more solutions. And the reason we get more solutions is because of the two here that's affecting the period of the graph, or even how many times you go around the unit circle. So one way to think about this, in fact, there's a lot of ways to think about it, but one way to think about it is if, we're, if we have zero is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 360, that could actually be written as zero is less than or equal to 2x by multiplying zero by two, and multiplying x by 2, and that would be less than or equal to, and keeping this all the same, we have to multiply every single thing by 2, this would give 720. And going between 0 and 720 for 2x is really just saying that we go around the unit circle twice. So at this point in time, finding the 30 and the 150 gives us the first two solutions. But if we go around once and then continue around, you'll see we get a third solution. So this is going to be 360 plus 30, which is going to be 390. So we know that 2x could equal 30, 150, or even 390. And if we continued around even further, we'd get another value here. And that would be, instead of considering 180, we could consider that this is another 180 around from 360, which is 5. 40. And if we have 540 and we subtract 30 from that, we have that 510 is another possible value that 2x could have. So a fair bit going on at this stage, but we now know what 2x could equal. So if we take both sides of this and we divide it by 2 or multiply it by a half, so we're going to multiply both sides by a half, we will get the values of just x. So x would equal, and 30 divided by 2 is 15, 150 divided by 2 is 75, then we have 390 divided by 2, which is 195, and then the last one is 510 divided by 2, which is 255. So they are the four solutions that we found at the start with our calculator, and that we also saw was the intersection between 2 sine of 2x and y equals 1. And now we've found those four values using the unit circle as well. And just to wrap this up, if you did continue around the unit circle until you did get to eventually a second rotation, or sort of 720 degrees, you'd see that there's no more solutions to be found. So those four solutions that we had are the only four solutions you get for this problem. So I hope this has helped you with understanding how we can solve trig equations using the calculator, using a graphical approach, and using the unit circle. Stay tuned because there will be stacks more examples like this and questions to do. So good luck with any trig equations that you're solving in the future.